Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I want to take a moment to talk about a popular yet relatively old lens that has a bit of a mixed reputation. I am of course talking about the SEL 55-210mm OSS kit zoom lens by Sony. I've been using this particular lens for a couple of months now and my opinion about it is mixed. Let's take a closer look. Sony's 55 to 210 mm is a telephoto zoom lens that is commonly found as a pack-in lens for older Sony E-mount cameras with an APS-C sensor, usually paired with the classic 16 to 55 mm pancake lens. Kit lenses like this are usually not the sharpest lenses on the market, nor offer the best build quality. But because of the affordable price, a lot of photographers on a budget and especially beginners end up buying lenses such as this one. The 55 to 210 mm came out in 2011 and is still readily available brand new for about 250 euros. However, because this was a common pack in lens, you can find them on eBay used for around 120, 150 euros easily. Of course this low price is a serious bargain when you compare it to newer Sony telephoto lenses like the 70 to 350 mm which costs almost 3 times as much. For reference, I did all of my testing on the Sony A6000, but you can expect similar results from other Sony APS-C cameras. Now let's start with the build quality. The majority of the lens is made out of cheap plastic. On the plus side, that means it only weighs under 350 grams, which is very light for a telephoto lens. The zoom and focus rings turn smoothly and you can make fine adjustments easily. Thankfully, the lens offers a feature that I think is almost crucial for telephoto lenses, image stabilization or OSS as Sony likes to call it. This makes sure that your image is stable even when you're zoomed in all the way to 210mm. And paired with these surprisingly good zoom and focus rings, this lens can be definitely used for some light video work. The focal range of 55-210mm to 210 millimeter is a bit unusual, but pretty awesome for everyday shooting. Good for capturing portraits, still life, sports or maybe even wildlife. Making it quite versatile, I think. And carried in tandem with the pancake lens, they cover a lot of different situations. All in all, this is a pretty nifty small form factor, yet powerful zoom lens that can be used in a large variety of ways. Unfortunately, the image quality is where the lens does not perform as well as I would like to. The lens has a variable aperture between f4.5 on the wide end and f6.3 on the telephoto end. This aperture setting does not let in a lot of light, so taking this lens out on a very cloudy day is likely not going to end up well for you. At f6.3 the lens is relatively soft in the corners of the image and adequately sharp in the center. If you want the best image quality out of this lens you will have to close the aperture even further to get sharp photos throughout. I think the sweet spot for this lens is around f8. With these settings the lens will swallow a ton of light making it almost unusable indoors. But it will be decently sharp regardless of which focal length you're shooting at. Another thing you can do pretty easily with this lens is out of focus backgrounds when zoomed all the way in, as you can see here. The lens has one more flaw that could potentially bother you. It appears to struggle with moving subjects. The autofocus simply hunts around too much and misses from time to time, depending on how fast the movement is. This is not necessarily a problem depending on what you want to shoot with it, but especially for sports and animals, this can be very troublesome. Overall, I think that my opinion on the lens is mostly positive. It covers a very nice zoom range and offers decent picture quality provided you have a lot of light available. The optical stabilization and smooth zoom and focus rings also make it a decent choice for video work. As long as you are aware of the lens's shortcomings and know how to counter them, I think you can have a lot of cheap fun with this. It cannot directly compare with more expensive telephoto lenses out there, but due to its affordable price, it makes for a great entryway into the world of telephoto lenses for Sony crop sensor cameras. 
I think my advice would be to buy one of these 55 to 210 millimeter lenses for cheap and use them for a while so you can closer determine what you actually require of a telephoto lens. And then later on buy a lens with a bigger zoom or maybe a brighter aperture depending on your personal needs. But that's it on my part. If you have any questions or simply want to share your opinion, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and of course, have a wonderful day.